In this video, you're along for the ride with me as I try this cutting-edge driver assistance technology for the first time, and we'll be hearing from one of the creators of the Super Cruise system to help us understand what it is, what it does, and how it works. I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. This is the Cadillac Escalade, and in this video... My name is Philip Vicente. I am the technical lead for the DevOps team here at uh, CTC Marco, involved on the, uh, well, Super Cruise feature. The current program that I'm supporting is the Cadillac Lyric. And uh, I've been at GM for about three and a half years now. We'll be hearing plenty more from Philip in a moment, and seeing from both my tester Escalade and a variety of other GM vehicles that offer Super Cruise now, or will soon, as Philip and his team work to roll the technology out across more and more products, including Silverado, Hummer EV, Bolt, Lyric, and more. By the way, if you happen to be an aspiring or future engineer that's interested in pursuing a career in advanced driving systems, he's got some academic advice for you at the end of the video. But let's start here, on the open highway, where, to me, this is pretty weird. I think mostly that's because I've been instructed by dozens of professional driving and racing instructors over the years all around the world, and one of the key lessons that they all try to hardwire into their students' heads is that your hands belong at 9 and 3 at all times. I'll never forget one instructor yelling at me for leaving my hand on the gear shifter for too long after a corner. She said, get your hand back on the wheel, the shifter's not going anywhere. I'll never forget it. But here, Super Cruise is comparing the Escalade's position with extreme accuracy to a LiDAR-generated map of this highway, and that's working in sync with other onboard sensors that can give the car a very accurate grip on exactly where it is. This added ability to pinpoint the vehicle's position with precision within its surroundings is the superpower behind Super Cruise's ability to give drivers extended periods of hands-free driving. It's for everyone who loves to drive, right? And uh, one of the, the great things about this feature is that it allows commuters, people who live you know, long distances away from their, their place of work, um, or if you are traveling with your family, or traveling for business um, on a particularly long drive, uh, it's a pretty relaxing way for you to get there. So in my own experiences, uh, there have been a number of times where I've had the opportunity, you know, to traveling for business uh, for GM, uh, being able to leverage uh, some of the vehicles in our fleet. And aside from the thrill of having um, technology take over the wheel and allow you to sit back and relax, like one of the things that I found, at least when I first started using it, from the consumer perspective, is how relaxed you actually are and how much work is actually involved in keeping a vehicle on the road. Uh, so that's something I wanted to maybe expand on a little bit. Um, it's incredible how much effort goes into actually driving a vehicle and, and, and keeping it on the road. And uh, not only do we allow our consumer to feel rested once they've completed their drive, um, there's also a safety aspect to it as well. Because you have uh, this feature active, you actually have a bit more situational awareness. You're keeping your eyes on the road. Uh, you're able to, you know, keep your eyes on your mirrors, and um, so that was something that I also felt uh, using the vehicle. Even if you're apprehensive like me, the system feels very natural. When activated, a green light appears on the steering wheel. The car magnetizes to the center of its lane. You release your hands, and off it goes. Provided the weather is good and road markings are visible, you could cruise like this for hours as I did. It doesn't even mind a little light to moderate snowfall so long as it can see the lines on the road. The second thing is that Super Cruise becomes easy to trust in a matter of seconds. When making a correction or following a corner, steering inputs are applied smoothly, predictably, and with a sense that the adjustment was carefully pre-calculated to be delivered as naturally as possible. On my watch, system operation was free of any sketchy, startling, or abrupt inputs. It's probably smoother at the wheel than I am in some situations. During my first 120 kilometers using the system, I was only tempted to grab the wheel once as a precaution in a snow-covered corner. So the point is, before too long, Super Cruise feels smooth, steady, and easy to trust, even if you're a hardwired 9 and 3 sort of guy like me. From behind the wheel, Super Cruise drivers can therefore expect lower stress levels, increased comfort, and the ability to enjoy watching the forward scenery with their hands comfortably on their laps for extended periods. 
and there's only one button. If you're on a compatible highway with visible markings, the system turns on with a single click. It's easier than activating the popcorn setting on your microwave oven. Just tap, wait for the green light, and it's hands off. If you need to change lanes, just tap the signal lever and Super Cruise completes the lane change for you, hands-free, after vehicle sensors determine the path is clear. What we have is essentially, we collect all this data about the, the roads. I believe there's over 300,000 kilometers worth of highway in North America and Canada that is mapped out using what we call a LiDAR technology. It collects all of this data about um, the different roads that we support here in North America. Um, and then we store it in a database. Um, and how SuperCruise works is using onboard sensors and cameras on the vehicle, as well as your GPS location, we corroborate the information from the sensors in the vehicle and compare it to this database of all these highways. And as a result, we're able to confirm things like the number of lanes that are on the road, that the current location that you're at. Uh, there are some unique situations where we are even able to get information on things like speed, well, speed signs, but more importantly, speed limits, um, so that the vehicle knows to stay within those bounds. And essentially, uh, using our our ability to control the vehicle speed and, and lateral control, we ensure that the vehicle stays within that lane. Um, and then I touched a little bit about the sensor that we use to check that you're keeping your eyes on the road. Um, this is what allows us to, to know that you're not asleep or, or being distracted. Uh, this ensures that you're staying safe and using the feature appropriately and also able to take over. Uh, so this is what we're ensuring, that the passenger does keep their eyes on the road and be able to intervene if needed. Yeah, so there's a variety of sensors. So you touched on camera and, and radar. The particular use case for the camera and radar is more just to ensure that you have the correct distances between vehicles that are traveling in the same direction as you and on the highway. Um, but the sensor that we're using to compare against the database would be the GPS or GNSS data. If Super Cruise needs you to take control, warnings are subtle but effective, a red light flashes on the wheel, there's a slight vibration in your seat, and an on-screen infographic request that you take over. The point is made quickly, but it's not alarming. This all integrates seamlessly within the driving experience, where it inspires confidence, helps reduce driver stress levels, and gives drivers a taste of things to come from the world of advanced driving tech. Rolling this user experience out across multiple conventional and electric vehicle applications is part of the work Asante's team does, and by the end of 2023, Super Cruise will be available on 22 different vehicles with both combustion and electric power. By the way, Super Cruise is a term that you may have heard before in the aviation universe, which happens to be where Philip spent the first six years of his engineering career. That similar name is is more of a coincidence. Uh, so as you may have found, I actually happen to have a background in the aviation industry. Um, that super cruise in the aviation context is more about uh, physical performance requirements for an aircraft. So supersonic cruise or cruising above the speed of sound. Uh, so it has no um, relation to autonomy or, or autonomous control of, of the aircraft at all. It's more about the engine's performance, uh, whereas Super Cruise, you know, is, as reported by General Motors for our vehicles, is an active safety system for, for our drivers to use. So the, the name is, is purely coincidence. It's busy times for people designing the next generation of driver assistance tech, and Philip has an important piece of advice for young and aspiring engineers and engineering students who hope to pursue a path like his. From high school, um, I actually grew up uh, outside of Canada. I, I grew up in a country called Oman, and uh, what we had, I think that was equivalent to your grade 12, was it followed the British system. It was something we call the A-level. And uh, the subjects that I was studying uh, included math um, and another subject called further math, <laughs> uh, just to emphasize on, on the amount of math that was involved. Um, you know, I, I was phys a physics, a student as well, and I also studied chemistry. Um, and then this really helped me to get into my undergraduate degree program that I did at Carleton University. Uh, so I actually got into aerospace engineering as my um, my major in university. Um, now, 
What's really interesting is while I was there, uh, I had a great professor uh, who really got me interested in unmanned systems, which is you know sub a subset of, of the aerospace industry. And at the end of the day, it's all about taking data from the world surrounding your device and using it to make decisions. Uh, so this is an area I got a lot of interest in. I participated in a number of student competitions, um, notably Unmanned Systems Canada. Now I bring that up just to sort of emphasize there was my academic work and then there was also this opportunity to do what we would consider extracurricular. I would strongly encourage people who would like to get into this space to look for those kind of opportunities and, and uh, be able to experiment with this sort of technology. Uh, so yeah, that after graduating from university, I got my first job in uh, aviation. Uh, I worked in aviation for about five years and you know, I don't know how familiar you are with the aviation industry. Things don't move as fast as in uh, in the automotive industry. And I definitely saw, you know, reading about the company and and uh, the role that uh, I was offered here. You know, that's how I ended up in the automotive sector. It's a very, very exciting field, highly competitive, giving, you know, coming from aviation where you only have about three or four different competitors to a very, very competitive market uh, with different manufacturers and automotive. Uh, that's how I find myself here. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. Don't forget to hit that like button down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.